I'm here to talk about something extremely necessary, um, very vain. It's about being your own Instagram husband <laughs> or wife or whatever you want to be. Um, but basically, uh, I'll give you a little bit backstory. So I do visual branding, which is really ironic because I'm legally blind and I don't know how like <laughs> I got into doing all these visuals. Um, but I'm a designer and photographer. Uh, I'm, like he said, a musician. Um, basically, with my company, I work with primarily other artists uh, to build. I art direct them, I style them, I shoot them, I do all their design, print, and digital. And then we have strategy sessions to go over marketing, social media. If they have a crowdfunding campaign, we work on that too. So I kind of take them through the whole process. But today I kind of wanted to talk about, because it's really short on time, um, basically how to take your own photos. Um, and it's not for a vain reason, it's for, um, building a personal brand, which is so important. And I, I didn't really understand how important it was until two things happened in my life. One, um, my band got signed to a record deal solely based on our Instagram. Like I had built out the visuals, done all these like cool videos and wrote the copy and we got approached and it was like, the music was very secondary. They liked that too. That was great. Um, so. That's just one way to show you how powerful it is. And the other is, you know, I just landed a new role. I'm starting Monday. I'm going into content marketing, not just freelance, which is I'm actually happy about because I want to kind of get out of freelancing full time. I'm a mom and it's not great <laughs> to be uh, stressed all the time. Um, so I'm still doing it, but just, uh, you know, not full time. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to be working as as a content marketer and a brand you know, consultant and designer uh, for GoDaddy, which is great. Um, but one of the things that they liked about me and one of the things that I heard from all the people that looked at my resume and the reason that the recruiters contacted me was, oh my gosh, your social media presence is great. Your, your images are wonderful. So that's why I want to talk about this, not just because we want to take good selfies of ourselves. On that note, I do like to say that it's not a selfie. If you call it a selfie, it's vain. If you call it a self-portrait, it's art. So <laughs> this is my selfie portrait. Um, anyway, so I shot this one outside of my house. Um, and just to show you guys, um, so I wrote like five things. I'm gonna look at my little notes. Okay, so the first one uh, is gonna talk, I'm gonna talk about with this photo. Okay, so number one, to take a great self-portrait. Do not care what anyone thinks of you. <laughs> so this was shot um, in between Costco and Whole Foods in the middle of the day, and there was like, oh, I don't know, 500 people staring at me in like a sequin top with my tripod and like holding my own reflector and just looking like a total asshole. Um, so don't care what anyone thinks if you really just wanna get a great shot. That's like the one thing that you need to make sure to do. Um, two, uh, number two, always be location scouting and always be thinking about <laughs> bringing your tools with you. So these are the three things that I carry with me at all times. So I have my trusty camera. Um, fun fact, you can totally use your iPhone. Portrait mode's awesome. Uh, it's not so much about the camera as it is about the lens. So if you do want to invest in something, I would highly recommend investing into a good professional lens. Um, more than like worrying about the actual camera body. So I have a little pro lens. Um, I have my little tripod, which is great. Uh, I actually carry in my car my like big tripod and a giant reflector, but that's not always practical. <laughs> so this works awesome because you can kind of like bend it and just put it anywhere you want. Um, so about locations, this is actually by my house in Circle C, and I definitely thought I, thought I was going to get murdered. It's like a really safe area, and I don't know why this is here, but there's just this random like graffiti park. Anyway, so <laughs> talking about getting self-portraits, this is in Mexico City on top of a pyramid, and I definitely had like 10 tourists ask if they could take my picture, and I was very offended, like, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want you to take my photo. Um, you're not gonna get the shot that I want. That's the other thing too, is like you can really, <laughs> if you do it yourself and you learn how to do it yourself, you don't have to worry about asking your boyfriend or girlfriend to sit through like, you know, 500 photos of you and they're sick of it and they don't wanna do it. Um, so a couple of like tr tips and tricks to get stuff. I have, as I said, my tripod and my camera. There's a few different ways that you can do it to make it super easy. There's always self timer, which that's my preferred um, kind of, you know, way to, way to do it. Self timer, there's also a remote on most wireless cameras. 
I have found the remote is kind of a pain in the butt because it doesn't work half the time and if it does it's really slow and it's just the connection it's just I don't know it's kind of a, a pain so and then the other thing that I've noticed a lot of people kind of doing lately is they just run video so they'll just like set up their camera and run video and then you can import that into like Adobe and then just cut it and pick which one you want to use for your photo I don't personally like that because I want the raw photos to edit later um, but yeah so you know you can go on vacations by yourself and just take lovely photos. It's totally possible. Um, so another thing about building a personal brand in taking photos of yourself is also knowing your lighting. So something that's really important, this is just, I have like a studio set up at my house. Um, super easy ring light and a soft box, but also being outside, knowing should I be facing the light? Is it gonna be backlit? You know, what kind of like lighting situation I'm gonna be in? And while you can, you know, read up on that, I think the most important thing is just to go out and do it. Like learn by, you know, trial by fire sort of thing. So, um, you know, knowing, knowing that is one thing, but actually putting it into practice, it's like you, you have to basically learn how to, hi, Wiley. <laughs> you have to learn how to harness the sun, basically, which is not an easy feat. So um, another thing that my, my boyfriend kind of thought I was insane, which I'm, I might be crazy, but I, I bought this and I've been carrying it with me and I, I did go to like eat the other day and like whipped it out like, like an idiot, but like it's like your own little personal reflector. <laughs> and so you just kind of like, put, like pretend like no one's watching you and like make the sun your friend. So um, these are great. This is on Amazon and it's like $3 or something. So I always carry this with me just in case because you never know when you just need like a little bit of like pop of shadows off of your eyes. What are we looking for there? This you want to reflect it off of the sun or any I light mean, source. Oh, sorry. Put it in Amazon. Oh, so um, mini. I was like, <laughs> reflector. Um, I think I just Googled mini reflector. Okay. Yeah, it's really, really easy to get and super cheap. Um, and a lot better than a giant reflector. And, you know, I, I, I have this like vision though one day of like, cause you know, we always see people with like selfie sticks. I'm like, everybody's gonna have their like reflector and like looking for the sun, which is gonna be a strange world to live in. But anyway, so my third point is know your <laughs> lighting. Um, so brings me to my next point. This is definitely at an abandoned JCPenney's parking lot that I did get kicked out of. So, <laughs> <laughs> like they're off camera you can't see but there's like a security guard coming in and telling me that I have to stop taking photos <laughs> um, <laughs> so number four is to know your body so one thing about you know making sure that you have a good personal brand too is knowing how you're coming across and how you're looking to other people and we all have we all have something that, that we love about ourselves that we just like totally is like our thing and we rock and then other things we just don't really like and we just don't really want to put onto the world or we feel a little self-conscious about. So like if your left shoulder is like fire, like that's, show that, okay? That's that's your money, okay? Like whatever it is, you know, make sure that you're, that you're showing that. And then also the more you kind of like are comfortable in front of the camera, whether it's speaking or taking photos, I find that that translates really well to real life too. So I think the more that you kind of are an asshole <laughs> with yourself and your camera and you look like an idiot, you, you just don't get as nervous. Like I have terrible social anxiety, um, mainly talking one-on-one, -on -one, I'm great. I think it's like growing up in like a show business like lifestyle, I'm great with like 10,000 people, but there's one, I'm like, I don't wanna talk to you, I'm really scared. So um, I think it really helps with that. Um, so also knowing your body and knowing, you know, what angles look good for you because there will be angles that look good for you and angles that don't. And everybody knows that, like, you know, and it's really hard to tell when you're taking like a selfie because whatever you're seeing here is not a true reflection of, of you, what you look like. So practice, which is good. Um, oh, this is my son. This is the other thing too. When you get really good, you can drag your children into it. And he sat for about three shots and that was it. And he was like, that's all you're getting out of me. I asked him for Mother's Day. I was like, I just want photos of us. Can we please take photos? So I got three pictures. Um, so this actually brings me to my next point and my number five of this point is take time before you post something. So one of the most important things I think, obviously you want to try to get the best shot you can in camera. But if, if you know, lighting situation isn't exactly perfect, make sure you take time in post 
to edit your photo. Lightroom, I, I love Lightroom so very much. Um, but even if you're not using something like Lightroom, there's beautiful apps that you can do on your phone, like Viscocam's great, Snapseed is awesome. Um, there's this random one from Korea called B612, and it's fire, I love it, but <laughs> get that one. Um, their, their camera is weird though, it makes you look like you have no facial features, you're just like this plastered, I don't know, something. Um, so, you know, using, um, you can use presets too, which are great if you're starting out, kind of, um, you can download them on things like Creative Market, and they're kind of just like a one and done, or they can kind of get you started, and then you can go in and tweak a little bit later. So that's kind of what I did in the beginning before I got really knowledgeable <laughs> about how to actually edit a photo in RAW. Um, is I would just put a preset on it and then I would kind of tweak from there. So it's really good. And also Photoshop actions are really great too. Um, I still use those for some retouching things just because it speeds up my workflow, um, especially when I'm working with client photography, client work and stuff, um, when I'm editing like a lot of photos. So this was my like Russian doll phase that I was having when that show was going on. Um, here is another thing about locations. So this up here is a big sign that says mattress firm. So this is on the side of the wall at mattress firm. And this is what I mean by like, just go anywhere to take a photo. Though the shadows were great at this time. And I was, I was honestly driving to dinner for my mom's birthday. And I just looked, happened to like look and I was like, oh, that's awesome. And I just pulled the car over. And because I had all my stuff with me, because I always carry it, I just like squatted down, took a photo and then left. So it's not, we make these photo shoots that we like, if we hire somebody to, to take a photo. And I am a photographer, so I understand there's like a lot of prep that goes invo involved with it. But you can also get great shots in like two seconds on your own if you just have a little bit of like tools and a little knowledge um, and just take the time to do it. Because the thing is, we get up in the morning and we get dressed and, and we put our clothes on and we, we look very presentable to go out into the world. So we're very presentable to take a photo, you know? It, we're always kind of there. And I think it also helps you to, when you're, at least for me, going out in life, it's like, well, I'm gonna be going in there. Oh, there, I remember there was like a cool wall there. So I'm gonna wear this outfit and then I'm gonna take a couple photos and be able to kind of like add that into my brand story that I'm kind of building out on my socials. So you just kind of start planning these things randomly in your head. But this wall was a happy little accident. Um, the other thing is I, because of this, uh, taking all these photos, I have been getting a lot of brand endorsements and like influencer stuff. So people contact you and they're like, hey, I really like your photos. I'm gonna send you stuff. So th these wonderful people at Own Your Stigma sent me this beanie and I loved it. And I wrote this article on um, therapy <laughs> and uh, you know everything that goes into that. So, um, I think the more that you put yourself into your work and into the world, to me, you just get so much back. So there's a lot of ways to look at it as like, oh, well, you're just posting photos of yourself or you're posting photos of, you know, pictures of yourself. But at the same time, you're, you're actually connecting and you're, you're welcoming people to connect with you, which I think is really great because, you know, if you didn't put that out there, then somebody's not going to contact you. And, and I, I don't know, I just... I think of it much more of, of a beautiful way to connect to people rather than, you know, I'm sitting in my house like taking a hundred selfies of my face or something. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, just another random photo in front of my house. Uh, oh, that brings me to my next point. I did take some notes. Um, <laughs> so um, this actually came because I spent a lot of time on, this is another tool of mine that I love to use is Pinterest. Pinterest is my favorite thing on the internet, maybe besides Instagram. Um, I use it so much for client lookbooks and mood boards and stylescapes that I build out, but I also use it for my own personal um, photos and, and style and that sort of thing. So I think it's the best way to start building your personal style. So there's just certain search keywords I find that if you add the word editorial behind anything, you're gonna get better photos. <laughs> so if you like search, um, you know, like office style and you put office style editorial, like it'll be like fashion, but it'll be office fashion, you know, like it, rather than just like somebody taking a selfie with their work attire. So um, Pinterest is a fantastic tool. I usually, um, when I work with clients, I ask them to send me kind of a Pinterest board so I can get a good 
concept idea of where they're coming from before we start moving forward with a new direction. Um, and then I'll build my own and then build up mood boards for them. So uh, it's just a great tool. And I, I definitely found this uh, photo hack. So it's basically like I put a piece of cellophane on top of my, like just I wrapped it around here and then I put Vaseline like around and it gives it that like really pretty kind of like glowy, blurry thing. That's a word, that's, that's a technical term. Um, but that's a, just a random trick that I found on Pinterest, so it's great for that too. So I think just, it just gives you a lot of knowledge and it gives you a lot of self-knowledge too about yourself. Um, here's a very risque photo that I didn't really mean to put in there, but okay. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> this is in my backyard. Um, one thing, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about lighting. So this photo, I took a couple photos and it was great. It was nice, but it was really flat. So right here I have my tripod set up and then I just have my reflector like bouncing the sunlight right here, which gives it like a really pretty kind of glow look to it, which I think actually made the photo um, much more than, you know, not having that. So just taking that extra moment in everything you do to take one more shot, because I can't tell you how many times I've, I've done something and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. And I'm like, I'm going to push through and just do one more shot. Or like if you're in the studio and you just take one more take, it's like for some reason that last one is usually the, the one to like, to like sell it. So I, I think keep going is my goal. Okay, so here is, I have, <laughs> I also have a side project that I'm not supposed to tell anyone about. It's this panda project. Um, and yeah, she's, she's a Taiwanese pop singer and she's relaxing in the bathtub and she has her whole Instagram account. This was her on Valentine's Day and she took Sears portrait photos. So that's it. That was I just my little side project. Anyway, <laughs> um, but uh, so uh, I don't know how much time we have. How much are we on time? I'm like, close to wrap. okay, cool. So um, yeah, so I guess in, in conclusion of this, it's really a lot easier than you think to do this on your own. Sometimes it seems really scary and overwhelming because it seems like, well, what if I'm not a photographer or what if I just have my phone or you know I don't have the right tools? But it really, it really isn't that difficult. You can put a timer um, and 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 get some really good shots. And I think for me, the most important part is that in doing this throughout the years, I I've really been able to find. A, an admiration for myself that I don't think that I had before. So I, you know, always nitpicked and critiqued things a lot. Um, and if someone took a photo of me or whatever, I would just pick it apart. I didn't like it. But doing this, it kind of there's something about seeing yourself a lot in 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 different artistic ways that you're like, oh, you kind of pick yourself apart less and less, and you start focusing more on the overall art of the photo. And, and the look of what you're presenting to the world. So for me, I think that's been really beneficial um, and just really helpful in, in the world. Um, it's, it's crazy. We live in a really strange <laughs> time that you put all this stuff on the world online and who knows if it's real or not. Um, but I, I have found that I, I've found a truer sense and a realer sense of myself in doing self-portraits. Um, and I try to do them every day and, and you know, if I'm having a bad day, it's, you know, sometimes it can be really cathartic to kind of just take yourself completely out of it um, and also just get yelled at by strangers on the street because you're just taking a photo in the middle of the street. Um, so it's, I don't know, it's interesting, but I don't know, do you guys have any questions? That's, I guess that's the end of my presentation. Yes. Do you have several cameras or is that the only camera you are? No, so I have, so this is my Olympus. I love, I love my Olympus very, very much. Um, I have a few different lenses. I mainly keep this one on because it's, it's a pro zoom lens. Um, I have a film camera, a Minolta X370, I think, that I take. So I do film as well, but that's not going to happen for a self-portrait. <laughs> like, that would be really tough. So, um, yeah, so I, I usually just shoot with this one mainly. Come what? Do they come with like, hey, you can mount this camera, do you have to mount Yeah, so most of them have this little button or this little guy at the bottom and you kind of just, no, you yeah, so you screw it in. Or 
Um, for my big tripod, there's like a little adapter and then you kind of like, like settle it in and like lock it into place. Do you not recommend spending like thousands of dollars for a camera? I mean, I would recommend spending a lot of money on it if you have the money. Like there's some fantastic cameras. This was my like splurge yet still conservative. Um, it's not crazy expensive. I splurged a little, I splurged on the lens. It's pretty, pretty expensive lens, but um, you know, I don't think when you're starting out, it, the camera matters as much as it does your creativity. Like to me, people get the most creative shots from their iPhone and the iPhone camera is incredible. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think that unless you're like, I, I'm a photographer, so I'm actually looking to upgrade my camera even more just, you know, but I also like mirrorless cameras a lot because I travel a lot and they're lighter. So if I have a DSLR, like, it just, it's heavy and cumbersome, and this is super light to travel with. But, I mean, if you have the money, get one. But if you, <laughs> if you don't, then it's not like a deal breaker. Yes? So what was the other um, free editing software that you mentioned? You mentioned Snapseed? Yes, yeah, Snapseed, ViscoCam, um, ViscoCam, V-S-C-O, Visco, yeah, V-S-C-O. Uh, ViscoCam is fantastic. Their H HSL is my favorite, which is like the color slider. So I, it's really revolutionary, especially for me because like I try to, the other thing is too, having a, a good color palette and sticking to that really helps too. So for me, it's teals and oranges because I have orange hair and just opposite color wheel. It's a good, good thing. So sticking to whatever color palette that is and whatever tone, so if it's gonna be warm or cool, if it's gonna be bright and airy or moody, and kind of trying to stay true to that will also help you with building out that personal brand piece. And it's really easy too, you can save save your edits in all those apps, and so you can just reuse the same ones on photos, um, which is really helpful too. Yeah. What was your band called? Oh, so we, <laughs> well, well, we were called Signe, but our record label sued us, so we had to change our name to Art House Heroin. So our band is Art House Heroin. <laughs> it was same yeah, yeah, yeah. Same band, just a new name, so we can keep making music. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any so like when you curate how your pictures look on the account? Yeah. Is there any like rules like you shouldn't have just all portraits in a row? Or, like, so I. Actually, let me show you really quickly because this has been, oh, I'm not on the internet, but there's something that I use called plan with two ends. Keller, what's the password? Okay. Um, and I'll show you. <clears throat> I, I like to have a strategy. So, oh my gosh, this keychain thing is the worst. So I like to have a strategy, so I don't put two close-up shots right back to back. I try to space everything out. Why isn't this internet working? I don't know what's going on, but something's not working. Anyway, so I, I have it written out as far as two things. One, the actual type of photo, so whether it's gonna be a close-up, a you know, a landscape, a, a travel photo, um, and I have kind of, I, I rotate it. So one day it'll be a wellness post, and the next day it's a post about my, my kiddo. Um, and the next day it's a post about a travel or it's a post about a client. And so I make sure that I just keep rotating those. So like maybe every five posts, it'll be something I did with a client. So it just keeps reminding people what your business is, but not shoving it like down their throats. Like, hey, look what I did, look what I did. You know, and then one every three posts is like a brand sponsorship post. So not also not overselling people and making your account just about like ads. So I think it's really smart. So plan, I use plan, which is P-L-A-N-N. -N. Uh, I think it's $9 a month. I think there is a free option too, but it's fantastic because there's a whole strategy on there and you can kind of like see the grid before you post it. So you can move things around if they don't look exactly right. Um, there's a hashtag strategy campaign on there. Um, it, it also analyzes your color palette and tells you what color palette is performing better than others. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think what else it does. It's, it's incredible. Um, you see, upload photos and you can also save captions. Um, you can start tracking 
other companies and other pages. It, it's just, it's awesome. So that's what I use for Instagram. Yeah. Plan. 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 Oh, plan. Yeah. P-L-A-N-N. -N. Yeah. Plan is awesome. That has kind of revolutionized sharing for me because it just, you, I, you know, I'll take like Sunday for an hour and I'll just go through what I've shot and I'll plan it out. So yeah, it's great. And I don't think you should do the same thing every day. I think you should definitely rotate it. But the most important thing is consistency. So post once a day, if you're going to post once a day, or if you're going to post once every three days, like whatever it is, just keep it consistent because that has been the one downfall in anything that I've ever done is if I wasn't consistent, it didn't matter because people just don't remember and people don't trust you enough to keep knowing that you're going to keep creating content for them. So, yeah. Anybody else have questions or are we good? Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys. <laughs>